pick up on. Millie, here we go. Mm. So, yes, everyone, this is Yes, You Can. Once again, we are here. Millie's back. Millie's back. Yay! This is going to be a, a, what is it? Is it going to be like a first Tuesdays, right? That's how First we, Tuesdays. That's what we on. decided. First mm-hmm. Tuesdays. So, um, Millie and I are going to have a conversation. So, let me go through the spiel. <laughs> 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 so, you're listening to the new WPVM Low Power Community Radio Station 103.7 FM in Asheville, North Carolina. Online, you can find us at. Hold on. There's some. I'm getting some feedback. Do you have your volume going yeah. on? Um, so online, you can find us at wpvmfm.org and our Facebook page. We are f- live on Facebook on the WPVM 103.7 Community Radio Facebook page. If you'd like to see us uh, on video, um, so let me see. I think I put it. Oh, you know what? I I think I put it on torment. <laughs> You put it what? No, I just put it like this. Okay. All right. You you people in the radio land, you're not getting it because, yeah, we're, we're talking to each other about Facebook. <sighs> we are like, we are mamacitas over 50. What? How, how do you say this? I just turned 50. I don't know why you keep adding <laughs> years. <laughs> No, I think that once you hit 50, yeah, you're you're over 50. Okay. <laughs> if I have to be, I will be. I don't see myself. You're not yet in the 50 plus, even no. though you're 50. Yeah, but mm. I feel I feel in my late 30s, early 40s. <laughs> you know. Yeah, maybe I I'm del- maybe I'm delusional. <laughs> No, sweetie, you still have that youthful glow to you. Sure. Your eyes are shining today. They're shining. Some good stuff going it's on in life, isn't it? Some really good stuff. Okay, Yours so eyes are shining too. <laughs> 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 you think so? Oh, bad, 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 bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not supposed to laugh directly into the microphone because I blow up the whole system here. Okay, so. <laughs> Um, an announcement, WPVM's new social media and podcast services. Produce your podcast for your social media and program using our professional audio equipment or let us live stream your story to social media using WPVM's professional equipment. For local artists, uh, musicians, nonprofits, or businesses, contact us at WPVMFM.org for more information or you can visit our Facebook page and leave us a message and we'll get back to you. So... Onto our show. Yes, you can. My desire is for the words that you hear, that the words that you've spoken today, that they bless you and they bring you value, that they light up something in you, that they shift something in you. Um, Maya Angelou said, my mission in life is not merely to survive, but to thrive and to do so with some passion, some compassion, some humor, and some style. Yeah. She was one heck of a cracky lady, wasn't she? And she was like, um, you know, what I loved about her is that she was truly a renaissance woman in the sense mm-hmm. that she continually reinvented herself. The professions that she did, mm-hmm. you know, where, where she lived. She'd lived in Africa for a while. She was, I think it was in Ghana that she lived. She's one of those people, you know how they ask you if you can invite people over? Mm-hmm. Yeah. She and Oprah. Yeah. And a few others are one of those yeah. that I would love to just have at the dinner table. Yeah. I, you know, and it's not all because it's going to be all nice and fun, but also because she's going to school you. She's oh, gonna yeah. Oh, you absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah, man. So they, they were the mentors that I, that, that to me was like mm-hmm. superpower oh mentorship. Yeah. You know, you have those two ladies behind your back. There's nothing as a woman that you can't do, yeah. right? So um, I, I love that. Um, so when the cameras are not rolling, I want to hear what they have to say. Oh. I'm sure there's some <laughs> juicy stories. <laughs> As there usually is. <laughs> I'm telling you. Get a glass of wine in there. Yeah. And even, they get even juicier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> kind of like me and you, eh? Exactly. <laughs> there's the PG <laughs> version, and then there's the other version. Yes, I like the, the other version. real, yeah. real version. Ah, mm. which, speaking of which, we, Millie and I have, um, we're starting a blog. We haven't decided what medium that we're going to use to publish this blog on. The, the, what is it? Is it a blog? Big, 
No, it's not a blog, it's a is podcast. it? It's a podcast. It's like, okay, I can write. I don't know about, th- yeah, no, we're starting a podcast. Okay, so everybody gets You've an had idea. Wine already? <laughs> no. <laughs> So everybody gets the idea of how techy my brain is. I call it a a blog. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're starting a podcast. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it's what what we called it, Big Woman Talk. Big Woman Talk. Big Woman Talk. Because one of the things that we both have in common coming from the Caribbean is, I mean, I'm sure it's It's all over. Yeah, it's all over. I think it's all over. But um, when the adults would talk about stuff that they didn't want the kids to, to hear, they would just send them out, speak yeah. them out. So our goal is to have those conversations mm-hmm. with you. Yeah. And so you don't have to leave. And you don't have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Get a cup of there's coffee. A, there's a juicy A glass of water with some lemon. Yeah, there's Something. a juicy conversation. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. I like that. About anything mm. and everything. Mm. Yes. Those meaningful ones that, you know, you find yourself thinking about them uh, over and over again. Mm-hmm. And where you laughed, you laugh again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Those kind. So the topic that most excites me is how do we shift from a survival mode to a thriving mode? And how can we live better? Living better in our bodies, living better in our hearts, our minds, and in our spirit. How do we rechart our course if we find that the direction that we're headed in isn't very empowering? You know, when you're ready to lift yourself up, that that, that becomes the the most important part. you got to be ready for that move. It's amazing, but sometimes you think you're ready, and it takes a few years to get there. Mm. But once that idea is created, you've already put it up in the universe, Mm -hmm. so you're aligned to it. Mm -hmm. So when you have a dream or a desire, it's not going to happen immediately, but you have to have that idea first mm-hmm. in order for it to give birth to it. Right. And I love that. I love I love this. I just want you know, Tanya calls them lifelines. And I think yeah. that before the lifeline appears, there's a lot of desiring and wanting and calling that mm-hmm. in before it actually does. And, and, and then you've got to be paying attention. Because some of us... Oh, it comes in, sy- in synchronicity. Yeah. And if you're not paying attention, it could just... Yeah, yeah, just like that. Yeah, and then you got to wait for the next loop, you know. Um, so Millie and I, we are going to talk about um, what was it, the t- topic of that email that I read? How many frogs do you have to, to kiss, kiss before, before you get be, before consider? S- can you say that word? <laughs> consider a slut? Yeah, can you say s- slut? Slut? Well, we just said it. <laughs> 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 I think it's okay. Well, I mean, because the media talks about slut shaming, so I don't okay, see so it. Okay, so yeah, as yeah. long as you put shaming behind it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you, you can you have to put it together because if you say it by itself, <laughs> you made me snort, Kelly. <laughs> if you say it, you make me snort. If you say it by itself, it it might be not acceptable. So uh huh, slut shaming. There you go. Oh, okay. Well, what about all these other words that I found? Um, well, anyway, we'll we'll go well, on. Well, those to you can say. I mean, well, those are all words we can say. So, w- how did this conversation? We started talking about this on Saturday. Saturday, when we were driving in the car, Callie's in the car with me, <laughs> and I have God. Me. P.S. I was going to take my kid away. <laughs> 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 no, we were talking. She's four years old, and she's having the wisdom of That's Maya right. Angelou That's and right. Oprah Winfrey in the car with us. Y- okay, you're right. Really? Yeah, you're right. That's the most perfect time to you're start right. mentoring. She has no idea. But <laughs> we were talking about narcissistic men. Yes, that's how and it relationships started. and how we are we ac- we allow these men because we don't have the experience or because of childhood programming. Mm-hmm. How we pick these men mm-hmm. to then determine our self worth. Yes. And that's how the conversation started about, right. you know, if a man goes out and he sleeps around, it's really not seen so bad. No. I mean, it's m- by other men. It's like, dude, you got it going on. But not even d- by women. <laughs> I mean, but there, th- there's no, not even by women. It's almost as if there's an expectation that that's how they're going to behave. You know, yeah. men are dogs kind of thing. 
that we. I mean, I know that not all men here. are dogs. So anybody out there listening or seeing this, please don't. We're not stereotyping, or you know what I mean. They're not all men are dogs. Well, what we are doing is we're having a conversation based on what our own personal history ah, is. Ah, yeah. So it's not so much about generalization about what goes on out there because I know that there were some other women who did not need to have narcissistic men in order for right. them to up level themselves. Yeah. But you and I obviously needed narcissistic men. I like a lot of hard lessons. <laughs> <laughs> the harder they are, the better. I love them. I mean, I thrive on these <laughs> lessons. I just I can't grow without them. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, you know, bring them on. You know what? So what was it you were talking about? You were going through the history of some of them and some of the things that they would say. Like when you, you know, when one of them was talking about, um, about. I caught him cheating. Yeah, you caught him cheating. Well, I didn't catch him cheating. I knew he was cheating. And so I, I said, you you went to do what at this woman's house? I went to change to install her washing machine, <laughs> fix the washing machine. <laughs> you can't even put a nail on the wall. <laughs> and you went to fix this woman's washing machine? Were you unclogging her plumbing? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he got that, that book thing. Plumbing for Idiots and he did it. Yeah. He just yeah. didn't want to do it. He was unclogging somebody's plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't the washing machine. I can tell you that right now. So but yeah. And then, because he was a narcissist, mm -hmm. he would turn it on me like I'm crazy. Yeah. And how dare I, yeah. I even think that about yeah. him. Yeah. And I even start, you know, I, I've even beat up that much. Uh -huh. You allow it. Not right. I wasn't, I did it, I did it. I did it for myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You start doubting. I started doubting. Am I really imagining this? Like, could he really have been fixing the washing machine? <laughs> and I... Could I really just be so jealous? Maybe insane? with me. Maybe with me. He just doesn't know how to put <laughs> a, a picture on the wall. But oh. maybe he has this hidden talent that I don't know anything about it. How old were you? What age? I was in my twenties. You were in your twenties. Yeah. Yeah. 20s. yeah. yeah I mean, so it was kind of expected. And he was a lot older, so you know. Right. Yeah. He There's a certain me. amount of naivete that comes with that. You you just got to learn with the experience. And I, I think I just had my eyes so. Disney-fied, you know? Yeah. Um, I had my eyes so Disney-fied, and I had this way, and I still do it today. I can, can mistakenly do it, where I assume others are as open as I am open, and so that I'm seeing the real right. person, and then over time I've got to go, ooh, no, I'm, no. I'm kind of like digging for the real person to yeah. actually come out, you know? Um so for me, the narcissistic men, they're, they're quite charming, eh? They're the best. Yeah. They really are. They make you feel, you start to believe mm -hmm. everything they say. Mm -hmm. Narcissistic men have a, a sense of manipulation that's... Yeah, it's they're good. They're very good. They're storytellers. They're, they believe their own lies. Mm -hmm. I mean, so you start to believe that you're going insane. Right. Um, yeah, I, I think, but that also came from my my childhood my mother was a little bit of a narcissist mm -hmm. so i picked i kept picking men who were very similar to my mother mm -hmm. so you know you can't argue with a narcissist you never right. win never ever yeah and it's always your fault something yeah. happens you know yeah you won't get fault. an apology never no you i ended up apologizing for them <laughs> <laughs> no, but you'll get that kind of apology, kind of pseudo apology, where it's like, you know, I'm sorry, but if you hadn't been that way, right? Yes, I you would not have forced me to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like that thing where some psychology there were right there. I mean, I'm on the other and side, and then of they this. cancel it out completely. I'm on the other side of this, and I think back, how did I? No, you tolerate were that for so many years. You were Disney fine, sweetie. I was Disney fine. Yeah, that's why now. Yeah, no, yeah. very different. Yeah, the school of hard knocks, eh? Mm -hmm. But I will have to say that I, they did w the work that they did for me in the end, the good that they did for me in the end, because. You know, I want our conversations because of the fact that we've got this woo yeah. factor, you know, yeah. the whole spiritual factor is that, you know, if you're going to have a conversation and you're just going to be one human to the next human, then it's just it's just a bunch Crazy. of drama that you end up talking about, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And when you do that human to human thing, then you can 
it's easily just want to slide out of any self responsibility for it. Right. So I'm big on wanting to be responsible because in owning it, then I get to own also the shifts that happen. Absolutely. Because of it, Absolutely. You know? I I remember after I left my ex of 18 years, it was it took about two years, and I had to call him about one about a daughter, and I was hanging up, and I said to him in Spanish, thank you so much. And he said, for what? I said, you were my best teacher mm. in my life. You mm -hmm. were the best professor I ever had. He yeah. had no idea what I was talking about. Yeah. My my voice started shaking, and I wanted to continue saying something, and I was I, I said, I'm going to hang up. And he's like, no, 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 let me call you back. And he called me back um, because he was in the office, and he called me back, and he said, I want you to explain to me why you are thanking me. I mean, my relationship broke. Everything mm -hmm. just came mm -hmm. up here. And I said, because of the way that you were mm -hmm. or the way that you are, you have allowed me to become the woman that I am today. Uh-huh. Really? He had no clue what I just said to him. But he, I mean, I'm grateful because of him, I was able to grow. Right. I was able to spiritually really connect with the, the broken parts of myself uh -huh. and heal. Right. If I didn't accept that, I mean, I had, I... Hey, I played my part and I played it very mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't the victim role; it was it role. It was more like, you know, I was a student mm -hmm. and I surpassed him. Right. He was Yoda in the narcissistic world. Right. You know. <laughs> he did. was the grand master that brought it yes. on in a big yes. way. Yes. Yeah. And he and he and I have to give him credit for that, because ha having him in my life allowed me to become the mother that I became. Mm -hmm the wife I am today mm -hmm. and meet the man that I have now because of the things that I wasn't going to tolerate ever, ever right. again. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, my husband, he's what you see is what you get with yeah. him and there's no yeah. nonsense. Uh -huh. And, and, and he's highly intelligent uh -huh. and he has learned, I have learned to accept myself because of the way that he accepts me. Right. And that's something that I never had. I, I, I had no clue what that was. Mm. So those narcissists, they served their, yeah. They serve if you role. don't allow them to do your head in, yeah. Yeah, they, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. They are very, very important in that training ground. So you were talking on Saturday about the amount of people that if you slept <laughs> with. Well, no, because I thought about that. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, go ahead and finish. The, the, the amount of people that in your mind, if you actually slept with, it was acceptable for you before being called a... You know. Yeah, yeah. I had, I, I think I was about, must have been around, by the teens. You know, I was thinking about it when I was driving mm -hmm. here to the station, is that when is it that I got this idea about women and slut shaming yeah. and, you know, good girl versus bad girls and all of that? And I, at first I wanted to say that it was high school, but I think it was before then, because when we moved here in 1975, I had one year of middle school to do. And at the graduation party, it happened at somebody's house, a graduation party, and I was invited. I was the only black girl in the graduating class. Wow. The only black girl. And while I had experienced prejudice because I was a Jamaican living in Bermuda, and they're all, you know, pretty much, I mean, yes, they're white Bermudians, mm -hmm. but basically it's mm -hmm. Caribbean, so it's heavily brown people, mm -hmm. right? And um, so they didn't like me because I was Jamaican. Uh, in the U.S., it was because of my color. So anyway, they're sp doing spin the bottle. <laughs> and I didn't know what spin the bottle was. Yeah. I just kind of sat down yeah. and spin the bottle. And they spun the bottle, and when it came to me and another boy, he refused to kiss me because I was black. Oh, my God. Right? And, but w in recollecting that, it wasn't so much that, but I was just thinking, I think that I had some kind of perception about good girl, bad girl, mm -hmm. even from, from that point mm -hmm. at, at middle school or something. Like. But then it was definitely moved into more solid ground when I was in high school. And as I use the word Disney-fied, I had already been, you know, matched up with Disney mm -hmm. with the Cinderella story mm -hmm. and the Snow White story. And, and they're all in their, in their middle teens, too. 
you know, Disney, Disney, I- they're all under age 18. Like, this, the prince is a little bit older. Like, where? And where? they're less than 100 pounds. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, so unrealistic. <laughs> 15, 16. I think Ariel, the mermaid, is like 15, 16 years old. Cinderella was 16. I was reading the story yesterday to Callie, and it was about Sleeping Beauty and on her 16th birthday. And I'm like, oh, no, we're not reading this. And she <laughs> goes, yes, you are, Mama. And I go, uh-uh. <laughs> we're going to make... We're going to make Sleeping Beauty over here 22 years old, yeah. okay? Yeah. And she wants to be an IT specialist. She's not yeah. interested no. in going to no ball. She's not waiting for the prince to come kiss. We're going to change the story, girl. I was like, what she is got this? Yeah, she got things to do. Yeah. And, and how that inadvertently conditions us, yeah. you know, because we get the stories, the fairy tales in the books as mm-hmm. well as, you know, video versions of them. Yeah. And we're so caught up and we want to, of course, you know, uh, what we do in our movies and what we, uh, when we watch mm-hmm. them is that we want to be the protagonist, mm-hmm. right? We want to be one of the main We want a happy players. ending. A happy ending. We want to be yeah. and we want the prince to come and oh, yeah. save us and, yeah. you know, yeah. bring our shoe and, you know, just, uh, yeah. Well, he wasn't very perceptive because he was putting that shoe on everybody else. He really didn't even take a good look at Cinderella. <laughs> he obviously never checked he out Miss no Girl's face. He had no idea what look. she looked like. <laughs> I don't want that guy either, okay? Either that because or he had too much to drink. <laughs> 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 we all know how that ends. <laughs> that is so true, girl. I never yeah, even thought of it like all. that. No, it's ridiculous. It's like, what? You never took a look at my face? Mika, yeah, man. Every time I have to read Callie a story now because I'm older, I am changing that Disney story to yes. my benefit. No, yeah. this is ridiculous. Definitely, definitely. Or tore them all out. Just tore them yeah, out. Yeah, no. I make up my own story. Make I just, she doesn't know what I'm reading. <laughs> I mean, if she, when she goes to school and she's going to retell the story, it's like, that's not the same, that's not the story I've heard in my house. <laughs> well, that's the story my mama tells me in my house, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I kidding. Love it. So we were, um, so because of the whole Disney fied thing, something I had in my, my early 20s, I had this idea that five. This is five before you got five, married? Five, or five before in my anything. entire life. Lord. That, that I was not to sleep with more than, than five, five Or then you would be yes, a bad that, girl. Yeah, I would be a really bad girl. I think I didn't have a number. You didn't have a number? No, I never thought about it. And besides, when I would do anything mm. i never shared with anybody i n- i did it always in but you must have felt that then okay is it a matter of that you think in privacy or was I it about shame it was, i was it was it was shame now that you think now that i think about it it was because some, some people it say it's privacy i just think but, i but wasn't that privacy it was more but that usually I when you dig a little bit more it's about how about other shame. people are going to think of you yeah. when they f- you know yeah. but so privacy is a whole different kind of thing you yeah know? If you say that it's about privacy, then you really don't care. When you imagine yourself it telling somebody, pri- you don't, don't I care. I think it was more of the shame mm-hmm. of what would people think. But I didn't have a number. I didn't, I didn't, that didn't exist in my head. Mm-hmm. But there was always that doubt. I mean, I was with a married man for a very long time. Right. So uh, no one knew he was married. And he, uh-huh. and my family didn't know. I mean, he would come over and, and spend the weekends. And right. I didn't have to give him that explanation. I mean... Uh-huh. He had a double life, and uh-huh. he did it very well. Uh-huh. And I was ashamed. I was ashamed that, that somebody would actually find out and, and see mm. me as this, you know, mm-hmm. um, the slut. Right. So, yeah, there was a lot of there was a lot of shame around mm-hmm. my my teens and my years right. of, of my twenties. Right. It was really. I think it wasn't until I was already. 40, 41, that I was like, oh, my God. But really? Yeah, it took that long for me to, to really, you know, I, I was raped when I was 18 mm-hmm. by a complete stranger. Um, and I remember at 36, it came up. Mm. I hadn't really discussed it. I hadn't really said the words out loud to anyone. Really? Yeah. And I remember thinking, but I didn't look for it. I didn't. It took me until 36 years old mm-hmm. to really say, I was assaulted. Mm-hmm. I was I was physically hurt. Did I you report it to the police? No. Mm. I didn't report it to the police, but I went to see a... Th- I remember seeing a therapist for it for a long time, but I never said it out loud. Mm. And I had just recently gotten married. I was 18, mm-hmm. and I remember I didn't even want to have sex with my husband. 
it mm. was it was horrible. It was you know. It did you tell your husband? At the I time? did tell my husband, uh, like a few years after, and he he started calculating right. in his head um, what was going on in your relationship. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Um, but he was also very abusive. So mm. it, to me, it was like I was attracting these. Yeah, the stereotype, this person that right. could use my body to whatever they wanted to, mm-hmm. and I allowed it. Right. So at 36, I remember thinking, this is insanity. This is not working for me. Right. I said it out loud, and I said it to my ex at the time. It wasn't just by passing, hey, I was raped at 18. Mm-hmm. I sat him down, and our relationship was coming to an end. Mm-hmm. And I said, let me give you the details. And he started crying. And he said, I don't want to hear anymore. And I go, no, 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 you're going to hear them. Because I have lived with them for 18 years. Mm -hmm. And this is who I am. And when you want me to do something and I won't do it, or you want me to be somebody that I don't want to be, whether it's outside of sex or in a relationship, Mm -hmm. I want you to understand where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. After that, it's like a relationship finally, because that's how I feel where I started. I started owning me. Right. I started owning my voice. So it took another three years. And then I was out of there. Mm-hmm. But if you have been abused in any way, whether it's been sexually abused or physically abused mm-hmm. or mentally abused, there's a point where you have to really own what happened. What's happened. Mm-hmm. Because what you resist will persist one way or another. It comes out in physical ailments. It comes out in replaying the same type mm-hmm. of person. You keep attracting the same type of person. Right. Because, hey, that's who you are. That's your story. Mm-hmm. So that's where my shame lies, that I kept picking men or relationships that allow me to feel that I was that girl that got mm-hmm. raped in a bank or mm-hmm. the outside of a bank. That w- that kept coming up. Mm-hmm. Like, well, this is what I deserve. And yeah. what happens when you've been abused like that is there's two choices. You either don't want anything to do with sex mm-hmm. or you become very promiscuous. Mm-hmm. And so... You have those two extremes. Right. And mm-hmm. it's so there's shame about the whole thing. And if you don't talk about it, if you don't see somebody about it, if you don't verbalize right. that this happened to you, mm-hmm. yeah, there's a scar. It becomes, um, the, the abuse becomes an identity. A that label of who you are. Yeah, a label yeah. And that you re-perpetuate long after the abuse has stopped. Oh, huge. Because when I think about even about, you know, putting all the aggressors in, in regards to time, it was minuscule in comparison to the years afterwards Absolutely. that I continued to abuse myself because that I held that identity about myself. And I did not, and I held the identity not knowing that I was holding it by not communicating, by not going through the process and yeah. that's shame. Yeah, and that's shame. And that's what shame does. Right. Shame tears at you. Mm-hmm. And in the way that you think no one could ever understand how you're feeling. And the reality is that we all understand mm-hmm. on some level. Um, even if you don't, if you never experienced that, mm-hmm. there's some, as humans, we have compassion. I mean, we hope to. Right. Most people do. Where you could actually sympathize with somebody and say, Oh my God! I might not understand. I'm not a drug addict, but I can right. sympathize yeah. with a drug addict. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? That the the, the addiction, with the struggle, the yeah. struggle. Yeah, you know, you don't have to go through the experience in order to be human mm-hmm. and say, "I hear you." Mm-hmm. I might not know what you've gone through, but I feel it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I hope that that's what we're learning. The more we talk about these things, mm-hmm. that we can actually say, okay, you know, the Me Too movement, right. that we could say, yeah, you know what, you're right. I don't need to keep quiet about this. Mm-hmm. It's huge. Yeah, it's a huge step to um, to speak it out. Mm-hmm. It really is a huge step to speaking it out, and it may be that that's the story that you tell for I don't know how many years. Right. Keep telling that one story, right. and you're not able to progress on to a different one. Right. You know? Um, well, I mean, and the reality is you're not your weight. Right. You're not your cancer. You're yeah. not any of that. Right. You you're are not your you weight. No, you're not. You're not you your are, history. You're right. not your... Um, Those are experiences that taught your you. Your credit rating. Right. Oh, yeah. my Lord. Yeah. 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 This is not who you are. Mm-hmm. Those are the experiences that brought you here. Mm-hmm. And I hope that the people that 
actually learn from them, can accept the fact that it happened, don't keep reliving it. Mm -hmm. Don't keep staying there. Right. Because when you do have shame, you're actually giving that much power to it. Mm -hmm. So you, the quietness, mm -hmm. the, the secrets, the secrets that, that we keep can really mm -hmm. hurt us on so many levels, not just... When they close you down emotionally yes. and spiritually, spiritually. Yeah. physically. Yeah. I mean, you put barriers around you. You you know, you insulate yourself, right. and it, whether it's then you start taking drugs or alcohol or even sex. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you cover the sex with more sex right. or with alcohol or with drugs or with shopping or with whatever. Mm -hmm. It's a huge problem right. in our society because mm -hmm. we've been taught to hush hush about everything. Right. You know, I mean, I remember, I mean, I don't remember the conversation. There's a whole that dirty laundry thing, you know. Yeah. Mm. Huge. Yeah. Don't let your neighbors know no. what's going on in no. your life. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. I, uh, there have been parts in my life that I have had, I wouldn't say regrets, but I have had moments of wisdom now. I'm going, mm, I could have done that a little bit different. Mm. You know what I mean? But every decision that I made has brought me to this very moment that I'm sitting here with you. Mm -hmm. So I can't punish myself for the crap that I did then right. because I didn't have the capacity to understand it. Uh -huh. It's who we are today. And I think it, w it takes you, when you get to that point where you start to love and appreciate yourself, mm -hmm. that you are really able to own your history right. in a very powerful way because you go, you know what? I'm still here. Yeah. I am still and that's here. a gift. And I haven't lost my mind. Well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with humor. <laughs> with humor. Losing your mind with humor. That, that's yeah. good. I'm yeah. talking about, yeah. you know, yeah. losing your mind yeah. where yeah. you just. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I heard it. I heard, and I've told this story to many people. I heard on the radio many years ago up here in the mountains. I was turning on the car and it was, I remember it was snowing. And they, there was a show on NPR about dementia and regret. Mm. And they had studied, I don't know which school, whether it was Harvard or Cambridge, they had studied tw uh, several people for 20 years that had followed them. Mm -hmm. And they had found that people who lived with regret tended to have a really bad dementia. Mm. Like not, we're talking about like early onset of dementia and right. Alzheimer's. And I remember the clarity. Permanently like put them into, into forgetting? A, into forgetting. The regrets actually hurt their cognitive whatever. Abilities. Yeah. So I remember it was snowing. I couldn't get the car out at the motel. And I thought to myself, oh, I'm going to get rid of all my regrets because <laughs> I don't want to have dementia. <laughs> I'm on this. And ever since then, yeah. it's got to be at least five years that I heard that. Uh -huh. Every time that I think I'm going to regret something, mm, I'm not regretting that yeah. because you know what? Yeah. I know from seeing clients that are elderly and going to facilities, the biggest issue with them is the regrets that they carry and the sorrow that they carry for not doing the things that they, I mean, I've had clients before they died. Mm. I wish I would have told so-and-so. Mm. Well, let's call them. Well, they're dead. And I'm mm. like, well, then you know what? We can say it out loud. Mm -hmm. The regrets that we keep because of shame and guilt. Right become prisons of our own thoughts mm. later on. And it makes complete sense to me how somebody <laughs> can have dementia. And then I went on to really think about my own family and the secrets that they had uh -huh. and the people that had dementia. And you know what? It was almost 99.9 .9 really? accurate, including my mother. So I, I started, I have seen it for five years now when I go into a facility and I'll read up on the story of whoever the client is mm -hmm. and the ones who have the worst dementia have the worst history. Mm -hmm. And I think to myself, oh my God, a part of their brain just yeah, shut down. Yeah, kind of shut down. So girl, don't have any regrets or resentments because okay. uh -uh. unless you have like vascular dementia or something that comes from other issues. A physiological you know, yeah. thing. Yeah. But the, the dementia, the cognitive dementia, mm -hmm. the dementia that comes from, it's based on regret. And I, that theory has stuck with me for over five years and I really do believe that that's why I have released as much as I can because I don't want to have regrets of any sexual partner that I had back there mm -hmm. or whatever. I mean, yeah. that, that slut shaming and all that stuff, that's, yeah. that's gone. That's, no. And you have to be the one who make a decision that you're not going to allow that to happen because right. nobody else is going to give you that permission. Nope. Nobody else's permission matters. Mm -mm. It's only your permission right. to yourself. If you were just joining us, this is Yes, You Can. And my name is Ann Lee Waite, and I'm your host. And 
I have my wonderful friend, Milia Medica Parma, with me, having a discussion. We're talking about slut shaming and how many frogs do you get to kiss before you're considered a slut. Um, and if that word triggers you, I am so happy you're triggered because that yeah. means that there's something that you need to work on. Yeah. Yeah. So just know I, I, I am not one for, oh, let's not trigger the people and be all really. D no, I want to trigger you. I want to get that you to think about. That means there's some healing that needs yeah, to be done Yeah, there needs yeah. to be some healing. Yeah. There needs to be some, from some facing some stuff. So, um, so use it as motivation to clear any type of regrets. Because remember, Millie just said, Study, Ooh. regret, remorse, early dementia. Um, underwriter support for WPVM is made possible by the French Broad Food Co-op. It's a locally owned grocery store focusing more on people than profits by providing living wages, supporting local farmers and producers, and being community owned. More information on the web at French Broad Food Co-op. Thank you so much for joining. Um, what you, all, everything that you said, I was thinking when you, as you were sharing, I was like, this is a conversation that matters. This is a conversation that matters. So All conversations matter. <laughs> what conversation doesn't matter to you? So we were talking about, so mine was the five, right? Mm -hmm. And needless to say, audience in the radio world and on the internet, I passed five <laughs> long time ago. No, I love the way you said to my husband. And then there was the other hand. Yeah. So I said, well, it shouldn't pass two hands. It was like, <laughs> yeah. So and there I was talking to Millie and her husband Matt, and I was saying, you know, it was the one hand. And then, and then when you asked when him, he was like, <laughs> no. And then I said, well, <laughs> then I decided when I started going into two hands, and two hands wasn't bad. And then after I passed the two hands, I was like, you know what? We're not going to count no more. Somebody the other day asked, we were talking about that, and they, and they said, well, I, I I have slept with a lot of people. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> "What's a lot of people, honey?" <laughs> like, what's a lot of people? Yeah. I mean, a lot of people what's could be number? five for somebody, yeah. could be twenty for another. Honey, what's a lot of people? And she told me, and I'm like, oh, "That's not a lot of people. That's <laughs> not a lot of people, baby. You you can let that go, okay? We are we are in a whole different century now, okay?" <laughs> Like you think so? Yes. yes, yes. That's a number for an older yeah, century. Yeah, because nobody needs to know the number. That's something that you should. It's not even about. I mean, why do you need to? Why do you need to put out a number out okay, there? Okay, but just the fact that we as women even contemplate that, you know? Yeah. I the don't shame of first of all, who keeps track? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> There's a promiscuous police around. I don't know who keeps track of numbers. I but I'm just saying that I, I don't think men think men about those care. guys. I, I think that they more care that they do get a hit bigger they're numbers. Higher the number, you know, <laughs> the bigger the macho, you know. Yeah. 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 And if they're Latin, woo, that's like, you know. Even more. Yeah. Even more. You were saying in the, when we were talking in the car and you were talking about how the Hispanic community and how they deal with it's okay. And well, I mean, I don't know about man. now, but when I was growing up, right. it was like they cover up the mamas and the aunts and the aunts. They would cover the up for the guys. They cover up for their 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 family boys. Their sons, you know what I mean? Their, and yeah. and I happen to think that that's look what you do out there is is your business. Mm -hmm. Don't bring it home. Yeah. You know, I remember saying to somebody who had just had a divorce. This is back twenty years ago. She had a little girl, and I remember, you know, you whatever you want to do, you do it from that door out. Mm -hmm. Don't ever let your daughter see. You don't need to. Sh you don't need to come home with a man every right. weekend when she's here, when she's not with her dad. Whatever you do, you're a mother first. Right. That goes out there, mm -hmm. and nobody needs to know your business. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right. So. I wasn't going to cover up for anybody. And that this is the thing that, you know, men in the family, mm -hmm. the Latin communities, they cover up. Mm -hmm. At least that's how I experience it. I just mean, but mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it was, it, you know, I think uh, the thing about the, the Caribbean, I don't know uh, uh, how other countries are. I mean, I know that France, they believe that, you know, it's kind of like it's a natural thing. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's Italy, understand and too. Yeah, to a certain extent. But Italy, less public than right, the French. Right, right. Yeah. But the Caribbean, certainly it's expected that the men are going to be busy. Mm -hmm. Even after they're married, they're going to be busy. Mm -hmm. you know? And you that know. doesn't mean, as the way that they say it, that they, don't, they still love their wives. Mm -hmm. um, they just do yeah. their thing on the side. Yeah. yeah. Just kind of like having a hobby. Yeah. <laughs> Plumbing. 
<laughs> unclogging the plumbing hobby. Yeah, yeah the plumbing. Unplugging. Fixing the washing machine. <laughs> So I decided I was going to give attention to the word promiscuous because that was mm-hmm. one of the things that we were talking about in the car. Yeah. And I said, you know, I have never heard of a man being re- being referred to as labeled as promiscuous as promiscuous. Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, that sounds like a word that's created just for women, yeah. you know, for situations. And then you put it here and it's true. And I did this thing on um, on, you know, just doing a search on the Internet. And so they've got it as a. It's a derogatory term, having or characterized by many, many transient sexual relationships, which in and of itself as a, de- as, as a definition is quite innocuous. It, it doesn't ad- identify male or female. Promiscuous teenagers, it doesn't say female, but eh, there's mm-hmm. a little bit, you know, synonyms, uh, licentious. What's this wanton? It's not like wanton fruit. What's that? What's that? Wanton, you... <laughs> that i've never heard that word before excuse me you <laughs> never read no harlequin romances or anything no. like that no wanton it's uh, it's a written thing wanton fruit. <laughs> <laughs> the what's want- that the wanton of promiscuity <laughs> <laughs> the wanton soup of promiscuity I've never heard of that before. I'm learning something new. Wanton. Wanton. Never heard of it. Uh, I was too desi- busy in school to be reading I Harlequin novels. <laughs> too, too, too busy living my own Harlequin novels. Yeah, I used to I used to read them. That's how I learned about relationships. <laughs> really? <laughs> that was your guide? That was my guide. That was my sex education. It was Disney and then Harlequin novels. <laughs> No wonder that explains right. so much on so okay, many and levels. Okay, and, 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 and there it was a little black child reading about romance between two white rich white people. White people, yeah. You're not Hispanic, no. not black. No. You know, there were always white yeah. people. No Korean, right. no Jewish, right? White people, right. and and inevitably, the girl was a virgin, of course, and the guy was very well experienced oh. and he had tons of money, mm-hmm. something like that. You know, it was, it was, yeah. Serious program. They still have it. No wonder. You know what? Stop your girls. If you've seen your teenage girls reading that, that stuff, stop Mm-mm. them right now because they're going to have a really rough time through <laughs> the whole twenties <laughs> when they find out that they're not going to turn white. They're not going to be yeah. white. They're not. Gonna they're be not going to have a Fabio Pagum. <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to. Ha- they might end up with somebody like the Incredible Hulk, but not you know, <laughs> not Thor. <laughs> yeah. And guess what? When they're swept off their feet, it's likely to be a narcissist that, oh, yeah. that sweeps them yeah. off their feet, right? So where's the other words? Um, immoral. immoral, fast. Do you have that? They have that in the, in the Caribbean. Yeah. They say a okay, woman are too fast. fast. Too fast, yeah. man. Mm-hmm. Well, I like that accent, but we didn't have that accent. Did we? So <laughs> 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 they might too fast, mm-hmm. and it's always the girl. Yeah, they don't talk no, about no, the no. man. Indiscriminate was another uh, synonym, and then the antonym chaste <coughs> and <coughs> virtuous. But the virtuous to me sounds like somebody some good. It doesn't sound like bad. It doesn't sound bad. No, a virtuous. But person. Which, we're talking about sexually virtuous, you know. We're not talking about the the the, the <laughs> head virtuous <laughs> or a really nice person. <laughs> <laughs> Is there such a thing as sexual virtuosity? There might be now. <laughs> <laughs> but there wasn't in our day. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> so I I had a story, I shared the story, and it was it was it sh- it was the power of secrets. I talked about it last week when mm-hmm. I was on the show by yeah. myself, right? And I went off to college, I was nineteen years old, I was at F- FSU. I was dating, um, he wasn't going to FSU, but he was an athlete and he was training track and field and I had a boyfriend. And he he went off um, on some trip or something like that and I slept with another guy. And I told my girl. (laughs) (laughs) It's getting juicy, go ahead. (laughs) Miss Wonton. I hear the story before. I need to hear it now. Hold on. Let me get my feet. 
comfy. Because, oh, you know, we, me and Millie and I, we sit in the studio. We have no shoes on. Oh, you know. my God. I yeah. actually put mine in the garbage. The garbage <laughs> on the way up. Walks out of the elevator. I go, where are your shoes? Oh, they're in the, they're on the right side there. <laughs> The thing strap broke on the side. What happened? What happened? This is good. So, um, so this girl, she was a real, you know, she was a strong girl, and I interfered in her relationship by telling her that she was being very verbally abusive to her boyfriend. And this girl, she got ticked off, and she cussed me out. And then, as I was walking back to my dorm room, she yelled down the hall about me being a slut because I wouldn't have slept with a boy other than my boyfriend. And I remember being. I was mortified. If you know, you know that whole ground yeah, open yeah. up, please yeah, take me swallow, down. Yeah, yeah swallow yeah. me up because you know I was still less than five. <laughs> <laughs> I was you still, still have to keep that number. You know, because God forbid you're I not going to find a good man if you go above that number. <laughs> so I was still in the less than five <laughs> category. So it was it was really important that I keep count. And that I keep stature, <laughs> yes? So what that taught me is that the power of secrets. Yes. And I decided at that point that um, whenever possible that I was not going to live with any secrets. Because I didn't, I, <laughs> you know, if anybody going to tell my secrets, it's going to be me telling my secrets, you know. Right. But it's not going to be me, it's somebody holding it over me that they got some secrets from me. And I'm like, you know, I have lived a very interesting I know. I mean, I have. Yeah. So I've done everything. And, and also, I don't know if I said this in the show last week, but I see, and when I look over my life, anything that I've ever judged anybody else for, inevitably, oh, I've had to yeah. do it yeah. the same yeah. thing. And then I've had to go, hmm. Well, see, I had that case. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I find myself, if I, I try to really not to judge because I always put myself immediately that there might be a judgment. I go, ooh, mm -hmm. let me just guard that mm -hmm. because I don't want to have to yeah, experience that. Yeah, because I'm going to have that yeah, sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it told me about secrets, but then the other part is that it was very significant about how easily I was slut-shamed by another woman. You know? Did you carry that, though? I carried it for a while. I, I carried it for a while. It was something that was just kind of like uh, in there. And then when I decided that I was going to fully accept myself, and I think by the time I was in my 30s, I was very much into that. Nobody's going to tell me what I'm supposed to right. do, do with my body. This is my body. Yeah. This is my experience. This gets to be my life, and I get to make my choices. Um, well, you know, and I think there's also because we have similar experiences. When a guy wanted to take us home mm. or to the car mm -hmm. or to the bathroom, <laughs> um, there was a part of our worthlessness attached to it. Mm. Like, if this guy wants to do this to me, mm -hmm. he wants me. If he takes me out of the club. I'm special. I am special. Yeah. I, you know, I... Obviously, there's something really good with me mm -hmm. going on with me, mm. and you know that's yeah. You know, because alcohol it involved and all that, you yeah. turn on the lights and people are making tea. <laughs> <laughs> You're missing something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, I did snort. <laughs> Look, hold on, I need to make at least one you more do, announcement before we go. Mm. Underwriter support for WPVM is made possible by Goodwill on West in Western North Carolina. Goodwill creates opportunities for people to enhance their lives through training, workforce development services, and collaboration with community organizations. More information on the web at Goodwill of Western North Carolina. Um, I, you know, I know for a fact that when I would judge and then have to do the same thing that I judged someone else for. Usually did, you did you recognize it when it happened? It or took a take few a times to get my butt kicked Yeah. before I would correlate between the judgment uh, and yeah. the me doing mm -hmm. it, right? And, um, you know, going back into my 20s when I was very big on 
I noticed that everybody had this opinion. And, and an opinion and an opinion, you know, it's one of those intellectual head mm -hmm. conversations, completely from the head, mm -hmm. right? For me, I wanted conversations that came from the heart. Mm -hmm. And to be able to have a conversation that comes from the heart, you have to have many experiences, and you have to get your butt kicked a lot. Oh, absolutely. You know, where you get softened, um, and you come to an awareness that we're all the same on the inside. Mm -hmm. We're all the same on the inside as human beings. Our desires are identical. We all want to be happy. You we know, I look at you right now. I feel so pretty when I'm talking to you. I are you listening to what I said, Kelly? I, I heard what you said, <laughs> but I have to tell you that when you speak from your heart, when most people speak mm -hmm. from their heart, there's a light that comes on spiritually connected to the divine wisdom, to God, to whatever you believe, to mm -hmm. call that greatness. Mm -hmm. And when you, just now, you, and I'm sorry to interrupt the story. No, it's all right. But it, it, at that moment where you were just saying that, I have to stop because it's so beautiful. It's that, it's that place where you know that somebody has healed. Mm. When you share a story like that, there's a difference between sharing a story that you're not owning and sharing a story that you do own. Mm -hmm. And it's just pure beauty that comes out mm -hmm. of your essence as you're sharing the story, which I just interrupted a minute. Go go <laughs> back to it. I just wanted to point out that there was that there was this beauty that I'm watching oh. right here in the studio as the light's coming in from outside and the way that you're... Millie, my love bug. That's why I call you oh my, my love God. bug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is yeah. you... You do, when you speak your truth, mm -hmm. when you're really authentic, that's what I see. When you ask me, you know, people open up with you or the vulnerability mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. that's the part that I crave to watch. It's mm -hmm. like, I, you know, people are addicted to whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm addicted to that that yeah. I just saw. Yeah. That part of, the huma of our humanness that crosses over to the spiritual yes. truth. Yes, it crosses over races, yeah, it crosses yeah. over gender, it's, it's it crosses beautiful. over e socioeconomic standards, Everything. all of that. Um, and that is, you know, those kind of conversations is what yes. brought the show to being yes. what it is. I mean, not to what it is, but just the fact that I'm doing this show because of that kind of conversation with Davine. Yes. You know, just real yeah. human beings who have been knocked around. Yeah. And they get up. The real. The yeah, real stuff. The yeah. real stuff. Yeah. You know, the things that have softened your heart, that made you more compassionate, mm -hmm. um, made you more aware, mm -hmm. made you more willing to become self-responsible. It opens up consciousness in a way that transcends everything. Mm -hmm. It's where you really meet soul to soul. When you have those conversations... Forget about if you had money or you lost it mm -hmm. or you're stuck with who and whatever. The real conversations come from the heart where you feel a connection. Mm -hmm. And so listening to you, even as you, you spoke last week by yourself, I was sitting in my room with the ear. I'm bawling. Every time you bawl, <laughs> oh, I'm crying. I'm like, girl, I feel you. You can't hear me, but I was over there in my bed. Girl, I'm, the, I'm here. I'm listening to you. I'm here. <laughs> I got you, girlfriend. I got you. <laughs> I've been there. I know what that's like. Yeah. Those are the conversations. Yeah. yeah. And I think that those are more of the conversations that are that are being called for um, amongst women in circles yes. of women that uh, a They're degree empowering. of of honesty and a degree a degree of you know what <coughs> putting it on a table yep. and like I'm it or leaving not. it yep. leaving it on mm -hmm. the table. Yep. You know because. Um, it made me who I am. Yeah. You know? Do you find it now easier, though, in, it, in our 50s? Um, <laughs> yeah, because you know what? Uh, Millie really isn't in her 50s. <laughs> she's just 50 <laughs> now. But she's not really 50 plus. Oh she's God. not really in her 50s. I'm just saying. Claim it, girl. I'm going to claim Come it. Come on. I'm going to claim it, but right and now. And there's some serious emancipation that happens, you know, yeah. for women going into their 40s and then mm -hmm. preparing yes. into their 50s. Yes. And it just continues to, I, I believe that it continues to unfold and unfold where we actually liberate ourselves from the chains that we placed on ourselves. God, we beat each other up. Didn't we? Yeah. Jeez, I'm peace to expectations yeah. that I had of myself, you know, with my five my number five for a whole lifetime 
<laughs> no, I love what you said. And then I thought, oh, maybe I'll go to the other hand. <laughs> You gotta go there, girl. Uh, Forget about the hands. Yeah, use your hands and your feet. You know, but you know that there's this thing. There's this thing that I would love to see a huge shift, and I think that the millennials of today yeah. are going to contribute a lot to that. Um, that shift in um, in ownership of their sexuality, mm -hmm. uh, expression of their sexuality, mm -hmm. in um, and not allowing you know the heavier constraints of christianity aka white males because <laughs> yeah. you know they write yeah. the real book for yeah. everything yeah, and everybody course. and everybody's yeah. got to follow in line mm -hmm. with that with that vision right yeah and um that i see you know but it's necessary Owning our power yeah and you don't have to give an excuse for anything if you're not hurting anybody i mean there, there's got to be a point where you stop beating yourself up. I mean, up. to a certain extent, we were hurting no, ourselves. No, absolutely. We were hurting You're ourselves. You're also having a good time yeah. in the middle yeah. of it. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. You regret to get the right. best exactly. You know what? Because that's the thing. That's the thing. When you're in your 20s, things are very <coughs> clear. They're black and they're white. Uh, what time is that? Oh, yeah. It says 5.56, right? Yeah. Because, you know, I don't have my glasses. My readers aren't the... Um, but... What was I saying? When you're in your 20s. When, it's when you're in your 20s, everything is really clear, and it's very black and white. Mm -hmm. And I, as I grew older, I realized there was so much gray. Oh, I like living in the gray. I mean, like, because technically killing somebody is not good, no, right? No, that you know. But if you kill somebody, somebody in, in yeah. defense of yes. yourself, yes. of your life, yeah. then, yeah, it's yeah. but it's still killing somebody, yeah. right? And so that becomes a, a, a grayer area. And I found that there is much more gray to life than th that there's, it's been th there's nothing that's really clear cut. There's no, no rule book. I think that's what I was trying to do with the I whole five. I didn't get five the manual. <laughs> <laughs> with the whole five thing. Yeah. Is that I thought well, that there was. you beat yourself up. You see, I didn't give myself a number. <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't give myself a number. I want to hear from other women if they actually gave themselves a number. Because I know I'm not unique, you know. No, I know sure that there not. were other women I'm that sure, out there I'm that sure, had I'm some sure sort that of a people number. had their own expectations of what they would be ladylike to get married. You know what? I need, to add, I, I need to find out. I'd like to find out if, if lesbians, if they have a number themselves. Yeah. You know? I wonder if they... Men don't have a number. Men don't have a number, but I'm just saying, y y women in a hetero. Yeah, that that's probably that's where the number. Yeah. That's yeah. Th that's yeah, where yeah. the slut shaming. Yeah, is. Yeah, I wonder if lesbians have had that. Yeah, you know? I got a lot of gay friends. I'll go ask tomorrow. <laughs> got a lot of them. Hey, let me did know. Did you have a number? Yeah. Did you still have a number? <laughs> yes. Oh, were you like me with no number? Oh, were no you number. good with no number? Yeah. But um. I am so happy that we are who we are today. Oh. And I completely, I, I, I own my lost years. I, I own the years that I abused myself with the choices that mm -hmm. I made and the people that the I brought punishment. into. Yeah, the self-punishment. Yeah. The self-punishment. Yeah. I own all of that because today I'm much more capable and ready mm -hmm. for someone really loving. And I... I love, that's what I love to see about you as well, too, is that you have this really wonderful dynamic of a relationship mm -hmm. because you had to kiss a lot of I damn had frogs. To. I had to. <laughs> it took some of the lie. <laughs> I had to kiss a lot of frogs. It's just part of the yeah. whole, you mm -hmm. know, my whole. My uh, prince finally came around. <laughs> <laughs> Your prince? Does Matt know he's the prince? He's a knight. He's a knight. Like he used to actually teach fencing, so I could say he's a knight. <laughs> he's literally, he, he had a school that he taught fencing, so he's a knight. He's a knight. He's a knight. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. We can let him be a he's knight. He's not shiny or any of that, but he's a knight. <laughs> no, he's <laughs> Does he have he a He has horse? no armor. He has no horse. No, but he's, he's a knight. <laughs> he's good. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, what a great conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Talk to you next week. <laughs> Bye.